Hello again. Uh, it turns out in a lot of practical numerical methods problems, what ends up happening is, is you end up essentially solving systems of linear algebraic equations of the form AX equals Y, where A is some sort of square matrix, X and Y are column vectors, and you have to solve for the unknown vectors, unknown vector X. Um, it turns out that some of these matrices are quite, quite large. However, most of the elements turn out to be zero. So these are referred to as sparse matrices, and there are certain advantages of dealing with sparse matrices in terms of memory storage, and there are certain algorithms that could do things faster if the matrix involved is sparse. So I haven't really covered this before, so I want to go back and look at it now, and we're going to do a simple uh, linear algebra problem with Python's built-in, or NumPy's built-in linear algebra uh, capabilities, and then we're going to build a, a sparse uh, matrix problem, uh, going back and using the stock Monte Carlo simulation code we did a few months ago. So we're going to basically take the same code and redo it as a system of linear equations, and you're going to see that almost all the entries, entries in that matrix are zero, uh, which lends itself to using sparse matrix uh, tech. So like I said in the introduction, a lot of problems in numerical methods boil down to solving linear systems of equations such as something like this. This is just a toy example out of a linear algebra textbook. Uh, three equations, three unknowns, um, and it can be written in matrix form like this. This is pretty, pretty straightforward. And then obviously the solution here is just to take the inverse of this square matrix here, multiply it times this column vector here, and that's the vector of our unknowns here. So let's quickly uh, do this in NumPy. So we're going to need to import NumPy as NP. Uh, let's just uh, keep our imports in its, in, a, in its own cell and do all the, um, the math in its own cell. So first let's define this matrix, this coefficient matrix here. So let's call it matrix A, and that's going to be NP.Array, and it's going to be a two-dimensional array. So Let's do, uh, what do we have here? So it's 1, comma, 1, comma 0. The next uh, row is what? It is 0, comma 1, comma 1. And the last row is 1, comma 2, comma 3. So does that look good? Uh, it looks good. Let's just put spaces in here to keep everything nice and neat. Okay, so now our y vector is going to be, the vector of knowns is going to be y is equal to np.array. And uh, that is just 1, 4, 6. 1, comma, 4, comma, 6. So there we are. Let's just make sure this runs. Yes, it does. So let's calculate um, our inverse matrix here. So A underscore inverse, that's going to be equal to np.linalg.inv A. And so our vector X is just the product of the inverse of A times our Y vector. So let's say X is equal to um, np matrix multiply a inverse comma y. Let's see if that runs. Seems to. So let's just print out the answer down here. Print x. Yes, there we go. So we got um, x1 is two and a half, minus two and a half, x2 is three and a half, and x3 is one and a half. Now one thing I do like to do is keep all my shapes kind of consistent with the way we've written here. If you actually were to print out this y, ve y vector here, you'd get a, a uh, one-dimensional row, uh, row vector rather than a column vector like, like we've written above. So I just like to come down here and say y.shape is equal to, uh, in this case, it's three rows, one column. And if I run that, uh, there's an issue. Oh, uh, I need an equal there. There we go. So our answer comes back as a column vector, and this is just a way to keep things neat um, for the way we code things. Sometimes the code requires specific shapes. Sometimes you can kind of fudge things, but I just try to be as consistent as possible. So that's, um, that's using the matrix inverse. The NumPy package also comes with a built-in solver. For example, so we don't, if we don't need this matrix inverse, we don't have to calculate it directly. We can come down here and go 
x is equal to np dot lin elg dot solve a comma y and then let's just print out our new uh, x vector down here and as you can see it is basically the same same code so if you don't need the a uh, a, a inverse matrix um, this is probably a cleaner way to, to code it up so now I want to move on to sparse matrices um, unlike this really simple problem here our matrix matrices and real real world problems are not usually three by three they're a lot bigger they're ten thousand by ten thousand hundred thousand by hundred thousand even million by a million and if you have a million by a million matrix um, that's 10 to the 12 elements in that in that matrix. Now that can be problematic to store and do computations with, uh, but fortunately a lot of the time almost all of the elements of the matrix matrix um, is uh, turns out to be zero. So we're going to go on to this idea of sparse matrices and uh, <clears throat> that NumPy has built-in libraries to handle these sparse matrices and what we're going to do to build up a simple system to show, to show it as an example is go back to our stock Monte Carlo problem. Um, this is a, I think I call the probability of a touch. What's the probability of a stock reaching a certain price in a certain time window? And the model used was this. The stock price at the um, S, at the ith plus one day minus, uh, at, minus the stock price at the ith day divided by the stock price at the ith day. In other words, the fractional change from one day to the next is equal to this expression here. It's the risk-free rate times our time step, which is going to be one day here, uh, times all of this, the square root of the time step, uh, times the volatility. And this epsilon is a random number sampled from the normal distribution. We're not going to worry about this. We're just going to assume it's a known, known value um, and move on. So we can rearrange this above equation like this here. And you see that it's a linear equation that's some, um, you know, it, Again, it's the equation of a line. Uh, and if we make this substitution here and write out each each uh, subsequent iteration, you have S0 obviously equals S0. The next one uh, is given by this equation. The next day is this equation and so on. So this is a huge system of linear equations for, well, not huge. It's In this case, it's going to be like 30 to 45 days, something like that. But this, again, can be written out as a matrix like this. So you notice again that this matrix is essentially all zeros. You just have non-zero elements along uh, the diagonal line here, the diagonal of the matrix, and this one um, line kind of below it. Other than that, this entire thing is zeros. So it doesn't make sense to store all these zero um, zero entries in the in in memory because it'd be just you know prohibitively prohibitively expensive for large matrices to do so. So, uh, how do we actually deal with this? So SciPy has the uh, libraries for handling sparse matrix matrices and sparse matrix linear algebra, and I've already done the imports here. So here, here these things are sparse and sparse linear algebra, and I'm also going to import the uh, plotting library. And the nice thing again about these sparse matrices, not only can they st can be stored with less memory, there are specific algorithms to deal with um, deal with uh, deal with them and it could be computationally a lot more efficient than having to deal with actually going through and multiplying for example multiplication uh, if all of these are zero you're just multiplying zero times times the entries in this vector a lot of times and that's just inefficient so there are algorithms built into that package to handle that and um, in particular inverting matrices will be a lot more uh, efficient if the matrix is sparse and since we're dealing with some random numbers here, I'm going to uh, set our random seed to zero. That will just keep all the numbers consistent from every time we run the cell, just so uh, it's easy to debug. And the fact that we're dealing with random numbers is not really important to this video, so I just kind of want to, to gloss over that. So let's set up the uh, actual quantities we will need for the uh, stock price, like the risk-free rate, the volatility, and, and, um, and such. And I'm just going to copy and paste from my test code here. So our initial stock price is here, S0. We're setting that to 100. We're going to do 30 days. We're going to set the risk-free rate equal to 1% annualized. And the volatility sigma is going to be 30% uh, uh, annualized again. And now we need to scale some of these things down to uh, one, the one-day time scale since we're going to do a day-to-day -day iteration. So we divide through by 252 
we're just going to use the number of trading days in a year rather than calendar days uh, for this. Our time step is again one day, and then again we have to scale down the the volatility down to a daily daily level. So let's just run that cell and make sure everything's good. Yep, we are good to go. And now we're going to need uh, our values of epsilon here. These um, they come into this equation here, and we're just going to again copy and paste here. So epsilon is a vector of, of random normally distributed numbers, and the um, the size is set to the number of days. So we're going to have uh, what's my number of days here? Thirty. Uh, is it 30 was and days yeah 30 days so this is going to be a 30 um, 30 dimensional 30 30 dimensional row uh, column vector okay so now we could just take that and plug it into this formula here to get our uh, percent change in stock price so let's do that so again I'm just going to copy and paste it into my code and this is not actually the change in stock stock price is it yeah it is it's um i defined it here as lambda uh just to, to simplify the the uh, the uh how we wrote it down here so okay uh in fact let's just change this code here let's make this lambda just to make it clear okay so let's run that that's good. So now let's go on and build our sparse matrix. And this can be a little bit uh, a little bit complicated at times. So this is the documentation page uh, for the sparse diagonal matrix building code that's built into SciPy. And let me uh, zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Uh, this is how the function is called. So we uh, pass in an array or list of our diagonal elements. And then we tell it uh, which which diagonal that those elements correspond to, and that like the uh, the zeroth element is the actual main diagonal, uh, that's right here. If it's less than zero, it's kind of uh, if it's greater than zero, it's above the diagonal. If it's lo less than zero, it is below the diagonal. So minus one would correspond to the first diagonal that's below the main diagonal, and that would uh, and when you pass in this array that minus one would correspond to whatever value um, uh, it'll be just easier when you see it because I don't know quite how to explain it uh, in words here so hopefully it'll be clear when we actually build this so uh, let's go and do that now so back to the notebook if let's build the uh, main diagonal first so that's this this uh, these entries here notice that the first one is one and then all the others are minus one so let's build that here down uh, down in this this cell here so uh, we're just going to call that ver that uh, vector ones and we're going to use the mp.ones command just to fill it fill it up with ones and they all have to be negative so we have a negative sign minus sign here as a prefactor um, and notice that the number of entries a number of days plus one because we have to have the uh, total number of days which is going to be 30 here and then we have our initial day which is going to make it 31 so number of days plus one and notice again that the first entry here is a positive one. So I'm going to come down here. I've already put a semicolon in here and then say ones zero is equal to one. And let's just run that to make sure it runs. Okay, that's good. So let's go on to build um, this lambda plus one vector down down here. Actually, let's actually build the diagonal uh, vector that corresponds to uh, to this here, this diagonals in the documentation. So we're going to call that um, we're going to call that D. Let's go up here, return. Let's say D is equal to, and it's going to be lambda plus one, and then our ones. So let's run that. Make sure there are no typos. There are. There is a typo. What's wrong? Name D. Oh, I need an equal sign. That kind of does help run okay there we go and now we need to set up what uh, what uh, what uh, this documentation calls the offsets vector so let's go back here and do that and I'm going to use the, uh, the variable k for that I don't know why I just have a tendency to do that maybe it comes from MATLAB I don't really recall what MATLAB calls it in the documentation so we have a list here and let's see here these uh, lambda minus ones are one below the diagonal so that should be minus one 
and then our ones vector should be uh, the main diagonal, so that's zero. Okay, now we're actually set to build up the actual sparse matrix. So let's put a space in here and do that. So let's roll down and paste this in. So I called this uh, matrix M, and I'm calling the sparse diags command here. So D is our diagonal, or is, um, the actual data, and then K is our offset vectors. And this format CSC just tells uh, tells it how to store the um, store the matrix in memory. And certain algorithms within SciPy require certain different memory formats. It's uh, kind of annoying at times. I kind of prefer MATLAB's. You know, MATLAB just tends to just tends to work with these things, but uh, it is what it is. So now we need to go on and define um, this vector here. So eventually we're going to calculate the inverse of, of this and then multiply it times this vector here, and that should return our vector of stock prices. So let's define this. So I need a vector. Uh, the first entry is going to be this, the initial stock price, and the rest are zero. So it's going to be a, a number. I think we set it to 100, and it's going to be 30 zeros below that. And I called this ve uh, vector P in my test code, I guess for prices. I, I don't know why, but uh, so here it is. So we're going to use the zero command to create uh, a vector that's 31, or you know, number of days plus one um, entries long. And um, it's explicitly a column vector here. And then I'm going to set that first uh, entry to S0, which I believe was $100 in our test code. And now we're ready to actually invert the matrix and uh, go on. But before we do that, I want to um, plot something here. So we're going to use plt.spy. And what spy does is show basically all the non-zero elements of a matrix. And so let's just uh, spy our M matrix here and run this block of code. And you see what we get here. So we have all zeros that are these non-filled in values, and we have um, basically a stripe of non-zero values uh, along the main diagonal and then the, the line below that. So that's a useful command. Sometimes when you're building these things, um, it's, it, it could be a little tricky. So this is a good way to just visualize that. So um, I'm not going to really use that anymore, so I'm just going to comment it out. And uh, we're going to move on to... Let's just, okay, we're going to move on to actually solving and getting those uh, stock prices now. So let's do that. And like uh, the dense matrix code uh, at the beginning of this video, SciPy has a uh, sparse linear algebra solve command called sp sp solve. And again, it just takes like the other one does. It takes the the, the square matrix and the matrix um, of knowns, and uh, that's that. So if we run this code it seems to run so let's print out um, let's print uh, s here our stock prices uh, what's going on here uh, I put a capital S for some reason so there we go that seems to work uh, let's plot these out and make sure that it actually looks like a uh, potential uh, graph of stock prices so what I'm going to do is use the um, a range command to define our time step so this is going to count from 0 to number of days plus 1 so that'll be our days and now we'll just come down here go PL, plt dot plot t comma s uh, what's going on? Oh, it's, uh, here we go. So yeah, this is our, the x-axis is our days and our y-axis is our time steps. So that's about all there is to it. So this might seem like way overkill for such a simple problem. You could simply set your initial stock price, um, up here and just loop through 30 times. And that would be the equivalent code. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to work. Uh, but And for such a simple problem, it'll, it'll be fast. But the problem is, in a lot of, again, real-world situations, you're not dealing with 30 by 30 or 31 by 31 matrices. You're dealing with million by million. So um, if we go on to differential equations, we'll see the bigger matrix, um, b bigger matrices, especially if we go on to partial differential equations. So I just wanted to uh, take such a simple problem and uh, solve it in a rather complicated way um, so that you're prepared for that if we ever go on to that. And in a subsequent video, I'm going to do um, 
I'm going to go back to finance and do probability of making 50% on like a short uh, premium trade. Like if you sell a sell a strangle in an underline, what's the probability of making 50% on max profit um, using the Monte Carlo techniques? And we're going to use this type of code uh, to to uh, to solve for the stock prices. So I just don't want it to, to come out of thin air. So that's all there is to it. I just wanted to do a quick video on this so it doesn't come out of thin air uh, if we use these techniques in later videos and I want to do a few that involve differential equations and boundary value problems and other things where this sparse matrices will come up again and again and again and I just don't want to have it again come up out of nowhere um, so yeah great uh, until next time see ya